Hey everyone, God bless you and thanks a lot for tuning in. I have a reflection for you that I've prepared, hoping that it will strengthen your heart and your faith, that I've entitled The Conscience at Death. The Conscience at Death. Before I speak about that important subject, uh, I'd like to wish you a very happy feast of uh, the Holy Archdeacon and Martyr Lawrence, uh, the, the great deacon. As a matter of fact, I wear uh, on my neck in my cross i wear my my baptismal cross and i wear my wedding ring but i also wear this beautiful little reliquary cross uh, and it has uh, in it um, a small portion of the bones of the holy archdeacon and martyr lawrence whose feast it is today on the 10th of august i feel very blessed very blessed so happy feast to you all. I also would like to make a shout out to uh, one of our Patristic Nectar uh, supporters uh, and brothers. And uh, This is a shout out to Jeffrey at Air Roasted Coffee in F Fort Worth. Dear brother, thank you very much for the uh, incredible bags of coffee that you sent. I can assure you they were put to good use, keeping me awake. Uh, in my prayers and studies uh, to help PNP grow. So <laughs> thank you very much. And if any of you are looking for some great coffee, Air Roasted Coffee, Fort Worth, Texas. Now my reflection today. Many of you know how much I love St. John Chrysostom, though I'm embarrassed to say that because uh, I, I should be more like him uh, so that my mentioning his name won't be a shame to him. But uh, St. John Chrysostom is known uh, as the theologian of the conscience. The issue of the glory of the human conscience is something that he speaks about in his anthropology constantly. And it is one of the most neglected areas in contemporary theology. It's one of the areas that we priests and theologians speak about least. This is why I've given some effort uh, towards teaching about the conscience. If you would like to know uh, more deeply about the conscience, we have a series on PNP at patristicnectar.org. You can find a series called The Voice in My Head, Lectures on the Christian Conscience. Very, very important subject. I particularly am thinking about the conscience today because I've been meditating upon uh, my grandparents recently. Both of my parents are quite elderly. My mother and father are both 90 years old. Thank God I still have them. Uh, but uh, they're, they're really at the twilight of their lives. And I was thinking about their parents. And I had a, a, an incredible experience with my maternal grandfather with regard to the conscience that I'll speak to you about in just a second. St. John Chrysostom teaches, uh, as does St. Paul. St. Paul speaks a great length about the conscience. The New Testament has a lot to say about the conscience as does our tradition, the tradition of the church in general. But particularly St. John Chrysostom does, and a lot about the conscience at death. And I, I'd like to just read this word to you from St. John Chrysostom. He says, this is his, in his commentary on Psalm 116. Do you see that it is not death that is the cause of grief, but a bad conscience? So stop sinning and death will become something desirable for you. Here is St. John speaking about death and why it's often so horrible uh, in human experience. And he's saying, look, it's not the death itself as much as it is the gnawing of the conscience. He has a lot to say, a lot more to say uh, about that. Let me read you also a beautiful word from St. Tikhon of Zadonsk, whose feast it is this Sunday, by the way, on the 13th, this great uh, 19th century saint. He says, for just as there is not better repose than from a pure conscience. So here is St. Tikhon waxing eloquent about, uh, like St. John Chrysostom did, about the benefit of having a clean conscience. Just as there is not better repose than from a pure conscience, so likewise there is no greater disquiet and torment than from a wicked conscience. If conscience torments so much here, how shall it torment a sinner? in the age to come when all his sins shall stand before him and it accuses him of them and torments him. Do not do what conscience forbids you to do. 
For an unerring conscience forbids what the law of God also forbids. And then Chrysostom again, one more beautiful quote. He who lives in evil is punished in hell prematurely, being pierced by the conscience. Wow. Wow. The conscience is extremely important. And forming your conscience properly and then listening to your conscience as inspired by the Holy Spirit is key to living a faithful Christian life, one in which your love for God triumphs. Now, let me share with you the story of, of my grandparents. I was stirred to think of my grandparents, in fact, because uh, I came into my office today and there was a picture of my paternal grandparents on my desk. I think it must have been in a frame, and I, I don't know if my secretary or maybe the deacon found it and it was out of its frame and they put it because they didn't want it to get hurt on my desk. And so I have it here. This is a picture of my paternal grandfather, uh, just here, Newton Bradford Trenum, and my paternal grandmother, Lorraine, uh, in the middle. Uh, my grandfather, um, my dad's dad, uh, was a fascinating man, and uh, a man very much, um, who, who gave me very many things, I should say, and encouraged me. He was a, a Oxford Rhodes Scholar. In fact, my first trip to England was to travel with him to one of his reunions uh, with his Rhodes Scholar buddies. He did a master's degree at Oxford. I, in fact, went to his, uh, he, he fell asleep in uh, 1982, and I went to a, uh, once to his college in Edmund Hall there in Oxford and saw, asked if they had some records uh, that I could see some of the records of my grandfather. There Computers only went back to 1955. But then the woman said, do you have an hour or two? And I said, yes, I'll go get coffee. She said, I'll go look in the boiler room. And uh, I thought that was hilarious. I came back and there on the counter were two boxes of correspondence between my grandfather and the principal of the college uh, until my grandfather's death in 1982. A succession of principals. Absolutely blew me away. I uh, brought home many precious things, took pictures of many precious things. What a, what a tradition, what a tradition. My grandmother, Lorraine, uh, was also a very, very educated woman. She actually uh, did a math degree at Stanford in the early 20th century when very few women were going to college at all. They were very much involved in uh, politics. My grandfather was one of the founders of the California Taxpayer Association. He ran for state senate, actually. He was very close friends with uh, President Richard Nixon. As a matter of fact, Nixon and he had talked, uh, my dad remembers as a young man, them sitting together in the living room talking that if, if Rick Nixon ever won the presidency, he wanted uh, my grandfather to be his tax man, his tax advisor on uh, national economic policy. The man that they're standing with is the Prime Minister of England, uh, Prime Minister Macmillan. Fascinating people. So I was thrown by, uh, by seeing this picture to some reflections upon my grandparents. And and it made me also think of my mother's parents. My mother's parents, my, my dad's parents are Angelinos, the born and raised here in Los Angeles, as, were, as was my great-grandfather. My mom's from the state of Missouri, and her dad and I, uh, I, of all my grandparents, I just loved him and was devoted to him. My grandfather and grandmother were extremely compassionate people, and I used to spend some weeks every summer with my sister visiting my grandparents. When I was a young pastor, when I was 25 years old or so, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, was dying. He had led, a, to my eyes, an extremely beautiful life. Uh, I went to see him before he died. I went back for his funeral, and I was amazed uh, to hear so many testimonies of his almsgiving, his hospitality, his encouragement, his service to his church over the years of his life. He lived in the same house for 60-some years. Uh, on a on a small property in Kirksville, Missouri. But what I most I most respect is that he wrote me a, a a number of letters as he was facing death, because despite all of those things I was just mentioning, despite despite all of his mountains of good deeds, he was tormented by a few actions of his youth that stung him at the time of death and bothered him so much that he wrote me because I was his grandson and he knew that I had gone into the ministry 
and he wanted to talk to me about God, about how he should, what he should do about his conscience. He wanted to tell me in explicit detail the mistakes he had made, the sins he had made that bothered him, and to ask my counsel. I was deeply, here's a man almost 90 years old, writing his 25-year-old grandson I, about matters of conscience. It shows you about the conscience at death. Dear ones, if we ignore our conscience here, I promise you, the ability to ignore your conscience when you come near to death is virtually impossible. The important thing to do is to listen to your conscience now and also to listen to it then. The stirring up of conscience by the grace of God at the end of life is a great gift to help us die with humility and compunction, not trusting in ourselves, but completely trusting in the grace of God, asking him for forgiveness and covering over all of our bad deeds and asking everyone in our life to forgive us, owning our sins. This is the way to die in humility. And I share this uh, reflection and these uh, personal reminiscences to encourage you to revere your conscience, form it, listen to it, and especially um, as you near the end, uh, carefully let it guide you into compunction and into mourning, blessed mourning, uh, so that the grace of God can be all over you in that most important day, the great day of your repose. God be with you. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to present a new six-part lecture series by Father Josiah Trenum entitled Demonology, Understanding and Winning the Spiritual Battle. The study of the Church's demonology is a part of basic catechism and Christian instruction. The scriptures are replete with teaching on the dark powers. Additionally, it is impossible to appreciate the magnitude of the saving deeds of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, without understanding how He, and He alone, has conquered Satan and destroyed his works. Lastly, Christians are called to fight and win in the spiritual war. And for this reason, it is essential that believers understand their enemies and their tactics. Toward this end, Father Josiah presents in these lectures in-depth studies of the scriptures, divine services, and pedagogy of great saints and teachers on the subject of Satan and spiritual battle. For these and other available titles, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.